Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 343, and today we're doing battle with Samira Varus. And so, uh, the, the Mastering Runeterra open event is beyond us. You can see in that event, the entirety of the top eight uh, was playing Samira in some way, shape, or form. And I think that that's what we're going to see in the upcoming uh, Riot open as well. And so, as we kind of set our sights towards that event, I think we're going to have to kind of be in a space to where... Uh, you either plan to, to ban the Samira deck or you plan to ban uh, uh, the Karma deck. And I'm just getting myself kind of lined up in the sense that I think that 100% of the people are going to be playing Samira. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, this is going to be uh, probably the highest play rate card out of any card at any of the open events up to this point. Uh, and, and I'm not going to be really surprised if she's up into something like 80 or 90% of the deck lists. And she realistically should probably just be in like 100% of them. And so that, that gets you in a pretty, you know, straightforward place in the sense, do I just want to ban Samira every time? Or, or do I want to uh, play something that, that is strong against her? And so the, the angle I'm starting to kind of want to take with this is I'm just looking to, to ban uh, Karma Set. And then we're just going to leave Samira up. And my thought with this is I think on top of Samira's popularity, the most popular deck is going to be uh, the Samira Leona deck. Got a cat. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. We're back. It's going to be the Samira Leona deck. And if you kind of like look back in the past, we played an absolute ton of Sunburn in the previous format. And it's fairly similar uh, in the way that it, that it plays out with this one. And what you used to see is... Uh, the, the the Leona Katarina decks just got annihilated by literally every other Leona deck that was in the format. And so uh, I'm kind of thinking to myself, if we think that that's going to be the most popular deck around, then we can probably just slow our deck down a little bit uh, and probably have a pretty good matchup against Samira Leona. And so we're going to look to add in something like Aurelian Soul or Demacia or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But uh, I'm looking to take Samira out of the Leona deck. And then that opens us to playing her somewhere else. Now, the, the next piece of that equation is you should probably just play uh, Samira Fizz, but uh, I feel like I haven't played enough Samira Fizz to really jump into an event like uh, the Runeterra Open and feel really confident in playing a bunch of mirror matches all day, especially if we're going to take the uh, take the strategy of ban Jack set. That's going to leave us playing a bunch of mirrors, and I don't really want to do that. And so uh, with all of those ideas in mind, uh, that has kind of led me towards Varus Samira. And I think this is a fairly interesting deck. Uh, I'm getting myself more and more uh, used to playing these OTK style decks. We played a, a bunch of OTK style stuff in the previous season, and it's one of those things that's really started to uh, work in my favor and feel pretty good about. And so uh, the things I'll say with this deck is, this is an OTK deck. You're looking to kill your opponent off with one big strike out of Varus. He can usually hit for uh, 14 damage or so coming off of one attack. And so if you can get a little bit of other chip damage in, uh, he's usually pretty good at just coming in and closing out the game. Uh, the thing that we're going to see as utmost importance with this deck is finding an equipment early. And so uh, we don't really want to be having to uh, draw Varus and have Varus be our way to activate all of the other equipped cards in our deck, like the Lunari Cultist and the uh, and the Keeper of the Box. And so we're we're gonna you know kind of make priority number one coming down and finding an equipment. And so there's only a handful in here. There's the three Darkened Ballistas. There's the three Ionian Hookmasters, and that's all you get. That's all you got. <laughs> and so you you have to uh, you know try to hard mulligan for those or use Forsaken Bakai's to kind of come in and dig for them. And so what we're going to try to do from there is if we have Samira, we'll use her to uh, stall out the early game as the best that we can. Uh, she does a great job of virtual card advantaging your opponent to where they don't want to play uh, any two health units into her, or even your three and four health units start to look a little small uh, once we start to consider combat tricks and uh, and things like Dark and Ballista giving her a boost. And so uh, that's what we're going to use to kind of stall into the mid game and the late game to where uh, we will become all in on Varus, and then we'll use that Varus to uh, ideally deal the crushing blows. And so uh, those are the, the kind of ideas to ha keep in mind with this. Again, you want to find those equipment early, use Samira to control the board, uh, and then look to set up these big late game kills with Varus. And so that's the deck. Let's go ahead, jump on in, get into battle. I got a cat. I got to move cat. She's trying to sit on my feet. And then, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll jump into battle. 
All right, there we go. It always makes it tough, man. It's like a million degrees out here in Kansas City now. Got some cat just trying to sit on your feet, getting all sweaty. <laughs> Not how I'm trying to spend my day. So, oh, she's back. I poured water on her, and then she just came right back. I swear I'm not I'm not mean to my cats. It's just... <laughs> I don't have a spray bottle around here. And she just keeps walking by my feet. So apparently it wasn't it wasn't enough. Just to get, go. Go. Oh my god. I'm just going to have to deal with this. We're in, the, we're in the middle of the game. Just going to have to deal with it. And so up against Jack Yumi. Not entirely certain what that's supposed to entail. But I think this is a reasonable enough start. I, I think we're going to be like slow enough here to hang on to the ambitious cultist. But let's just go ahead and get rid of it and start digging for some mirrors. And so we'll hang on to the Hookmaster as our, uh, our only uh, card in the opener. And that looks pretty reasonable. Picking up Darkened Ballistas is always great. We didn't find a... Uh, Samira to go with this stuff, but reasonable early plays. We got that key point we were trying to hit and finding an equipment. Got two at this point. Feels pretty good. What do we got? Anything juicy out of here? Not really. Uh, I would rather just find higher quality units at this point, so we're going to send all of these away. Probably want to find a little bit of interactivity. Uh, I assume Jack Yumi is going to go uh, all in and go big on top of a single unit, and so if we can find a way to, to take that unit down, that would be great as well. And so uh, I think we can probably safely go for the upcycled rake here. It's not particularly good on the Ionian Hookmaster. A 1-1 scout unit, not that impressive, uh, you know, but we can we can easily replace the equipment uh, with the Darkened Ballista and put the, the scout onto someone else. So we aren't we aren't really stuck with it since we have the ballista in hand. If we didn't already have the ballista, I would have just taken the other option just to make sure that uh, j just to make sure that we have reasonable stats on our unit out here. All the ballistas coming through. You all you all remember when uh, Ionian Hookmaster was a base one one? <laughs> Them's was the days, right? Them's was the days. All right, what do you got going on? Loading up with the fairies, I guess. Got those sweet equipment plus Yumi combos. I've, I've made that mistake many a times. <laughs> can't can't do both, man. You can't hold a cat in one hand and a sword in the other hand, and so it doesn't quite work out. So what do we got? Dude comes in with Jack. I was hoping to put uh, the, the upcycled rake onto the ambitious cultist and actually get some good attacks here, but... Jack makes that a little awkward. It's kind of tempting just to go for it anyways, but we'll make him a 5-5 and circle back to this retreat later. It just like This attack doesn't feel like it really does anything, right? We make the attack, he blocks with the Alcat, and we aren't really advancing the board. So if we're coming in with the scout attack, we get to, to advance the board a bit, remove multiple units, but... It's not what we had access to, you know? Alright, Conchologist coming in. Let's see what he does. I think we just want to pass here. Uh, I'm fine to just bank up a bunch of mana rolling into the next turn. See if he actually does anything, and then we can... We can Furious Wielder down Jack if, the, if it turns up to, to look good. He's really low on the mana at this point, so we can pivot. Let's get the Keeper of the Box in. Um, we shouldn't need to strike. I'm just going to look to Momentous Choice the Cultist and put it in front of Jack. And then next turn, we can look to scout up the Keeper of the Box and uh, punch through all these dudes that can't block. Blade Twirler might be blocking soon, though. What's this thing do? Take our guy to one health? Okay. It's been done. He's becoming quite the juicy target for uh, for the retreat. It's it's kind of slow, but getting the getting the retreat onto the cultist does let us that um, does let us replay it and pick up a different spell. Can't make it work with the the, the spell we had in play though. Right, it's a, it's a little awkward in that sense. That don't be coming out here and trying to put the strike and then the retreat out there with it. It's not going to work out how you want. You're going to return your unit back and fizzle the strike. 
interesting. He doesn't play his Alcat to, uh, to, to boost the Blade Twirler. So we get this free attack in here. Pretty cool. Also going to activate the All Out uh, to potentially use it this turn. I don't think I'm quite as excited about it. Um, given that, uh, you know, if we want to retreat the Cultist, we won't have the mana to put it back on board. But... Take some attacks anyways, you know. <laughs> Let's see. see if we can't get this Blade Twirler off of the board. So we're never going to survive this attack. That's okay, but we can double Momentous Choice. Uh, we'll be picking up Varus off of this, and then we can start to uh, start to use him next turn. Let's actually go ahead and use the All Out. I want to save the double trick for when, for when Varus is on board. Varus ready to get locked and loaded with this. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I, I forget that he's got that equipment. It's like you, you start to see these champions come down and you're like, hell yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do some some big double attacks with the Varus here. And not exactly what you want. Ooh, cat. Jesus. There is so much power in us. I long to know where it comes from. So what you got? He's got his Kelp Maidens with Yumi. The, the tricks coming out of there could be a little bit annoying, but... It's not the end of the world. I'm curious at this game if we just end up dropping Naganikas. We're, we're getting pretty close to them being scary. Just drop our big 513 overwhelms under the board, start striking stuff while we're at it. Not doing too much otherwise, it's probably fairly worthwhile. All right. I don't envision this guy can just kill us. I'm still curious why the Alcat's sitting in his hand. Like, he just has no no intention or desire to play it. All right. A little, a little scary seeing the combat trick turn up. If we're going to play the Naganika next turn, I, I, I don't want to have to pay the expensive price for this thing. Prank us again? That's fine. Oh my god, he hit it. That's that's annoying. We can still protect our Varus with the the likes of retreat, but not the way not the way we really wanted that to go. All right, well here comes the scout and Naganika. <laughs> get the get the damages in there somehow, right? Oh shit, maybe not. Well, that's kind of cool. So I mean, we'll bring bring the attack again. Is it Huh. I mean, we have a second Ballista we can play. We don't need the Scout anymore. Maybe we want to play the Ballista and then just attack with everybody. That's going to take Varus up to seven. Or, ooh, it only gets Varus to seven. He's not going to be big enough to to battle Balkux. It's just unfortunate to not be presenting lethal here. Interesting. I think we're pretty safe. I mean, the the elusives are annoying, but like regardless of how much spell mana he spends, we can just put a blocker in front of the 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 darken and recall our unit back. Don't have to worry about uh, the impacts hitting for anything. So what he's trying to do using the 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 Bandle City darken along with the coins to load it up with a big impact. See, I see what you're about. I'm not I'm not I'm not opposed to that. Alright, see if he can't figure out a way to get victory here. I feel pretty okay. I mean, we can get four units on the board, so we can block four units that aren't elusive. That's kind of where he's gonna he's gonna max out here, and then we should be able to uh, should be able to get more 
uh, overwhelms in next turn than he can handle. Well, we got something cool in the deck. I think I'm okay with the Expanse's protection. It's going to be good next turn. Just preemptively uh, put the, the Expanse's protection onto Varus so he doesn't get hit with Mini Morph in the middle of combat. Interesting, he doesn't hit the Ballista, just making it, making it cost infinite for a momentous choice, and that's completely fine. So where does this get us to 10? Then the, the Naganika at the end of the turn will strike the Kelp Maidens. I, I think we can stop here. See what happens. See if he plays a combat trick or something. Pokey Stick's not in the game anymore. We shouldn't have to worry about that stuff. Well, it's in the game. You just have to use Gnar to get it. So I don't think we have to worry about you know surprise damage coming through. Jerseys. Fuck that too. <laughs> Kills our Varus. Can we still win next turn without Varus? I mean, we, we have the Naganika that we could just switch to trying to kill with. We're going to lose one of them, right? I, I think these are going to strike left or right, so the one is going to strike the Kelp Badens, but then we should still have another one after the fact. But this is a pretty easy, easy save for Varus. It's almost more tempting just to, to play the retreat onto the ambitious cultist. We should have flipped, flipped these blocks around, right? We could have retreated the, the Bakai and then played it back down. I don't think he has a way to kill us, though. Maybe it's just, it's just safe enough, I guess. No, it's not. No, it's not. Hang on. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> We got, we got another Varus in hand as well. I think we're okay. Let's just prevent the damage, and I, I think we'll be fine. So many options. So we get the Ballista back down. I'm not sure how these strikes go. It should go left to right, so I think our 6-3 should strike uh, his 7-3. Then our... 513 will take down the Kelp Maidens, I, I think. He's adding birds, that's fine. Does go left to right. Okay. So let's do this. The, the way I'm thinking of doing this is we're going to play Varus. Then we're going to just go ahead and put Expanse's Protection onto Varus. Then we'll load uh, the Upcycled Rake onto the Naganika. And then we'll get to attack with the Naganika ideally twice. But let's see. Mm. Bring it into pranks, huh? I think we're still okay either way. Just again, the only card we really have to worry about is going to be Minimorph. He's only got six mana now, so we should be fine. Let's actually move this over onto the uh, the the Naganika. Got him. G G. Ooh, good stuff. Oh, Yumi coming through. There's been a bit of a rise of Yumi Pantheon going through these days. I know we haven't we haven't seen Yumi Pantheon in like six months, but. Starting to starting to make a comeback. It's uh, it's one of those decks that uh, if you're just putting a bunch of dum dums on the board, it's very easy to crash through and get kills. And so it has a bit of game against uh, uh, things like um, Samira Leona. That just it's a little tougher against Samira Leona because they can come out and just get like a bunch of eight and nine health units on the board, but they don't interact very well. the The extent of their interaction is Samira and usually Nox and Fervor, and then some combat trick. And so, you, you really get to kind of pick and choose your spots and, uh, as far as uh, as Pantheon is concerned. 
Now, I don't know what the deal with Evelyn Viego is. If this is just because we're playing in, uh, if it's just because we're playing in Platinum on the second account, but I've played against this like four times today. <laughs> it's been insane. Like, I, I think I've maybe played against uh, uh, Evelyn Viego like once since the, uh, since, since the rotation in the new set came out. It's been crazy how many times we've seen it up to this point. But here, uh, we can hang on to Samira. Uh, if he's going to, um, uh, I'm sorry, I should say we have the, the Hookmaster and the Ballista in hand, so we don't have to worry about finding equipment. Then uh, I was pretty certain he was going to attack and just trade his unit away. And so we can kind of play around hate spikes at this point because he doesn't have any units on board. So she should be pretty safe at this point. Now, if we can roll into next turn and get a Hookmaster and be protected with the momentous choice. Definitely be feeling pretty good about this. I should stamp you out like the insect you are. Challenger husk. All right, I'll pick. I'll pick the uh, the the fearsome equipment this time. I I kind of feel like we're just not gonna have the the scout attacks this game. I mean, maybe maybe that was a mistake, right? <laughs> I I'm kind of envisioning what we're gonna do in this upcoming turn, and I was planning on just hooking the the desperate husk with Samira, but. Maybe that was a, a bit preemptive. Uh, I must say the, the scouting Samira would be uh, fairly powerful at this point. This should be fun. But we want to get the husk off the board before he can play Evelyn. We aren't in a in a giant hurry here, so if we can kill this dum-dum, that would be useful. There's the hate spike. Not what we were wanting to see, but... It's too bad. I don't I don't care about spending the cards here. It's just the, the bummer is he's going to have the husk before Evelyn comes down. Impress me. All right, so it doesn't seem like he has her. When I allow you. Don't waste my time. Maybe we should have preemptively hooked Samira here since we have the Furious Wielder. Ugh, nothing to do now. Oh my gosh, and she's going to hit tough? <sighs> F. Well, we could take like a six hit for this turn. It's not that big of a deal. And then she shouldn't be flipped next turn. Right, she's only got four kills at this point. Well, we can we can technically get the stats to get the takedown, but it seems a little weak to me. We'll be slow here. We're going to miss out on this Samira flip, but our hand is so awkward and bad. Like, <laughs> we have all these tricks. Uh, th this is just like a, a, a mega punish for us not coming in and taking the... Uh, for, for not coming in and taking the... Uh, the scout equipment. It just feels worse and worse and worse at this point. <laughs> now Viego. Awesome. Well, we can, we can still generate... Plus six attack. Maybe they'll do something dumb here. <laughs> that's what. That's what you gotta just come out and hope for. Sometimes I suspect he'll just block Samira with the encroaching mist. But if he wants to get real clever and throw an Evelyn or something in front, we can smoke his board. We just gotta gotta hope for the best at this point. Do it. Do it. Diego, Evelyn, there we go, there we go. So he's gonna, he, he he's gonna give us the business end by uh, bringing forth another hate spike. But this is <laughs> this is this is our angle for for getting a victory. We're gonna have to play it all. We'll stop right here. But we're gonna have to momentous choice to take the Diego down. We even want to do it this turn? We could wait till next turn. No, no, our <laughs> Samira's gonna lose all her stats. Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Just when you thought you've seen it all. 
get the get the big booms here. Hi. Feels like a bit of recovery. We're still not in a particularly great spot, but we we have the the Varus, and then getting the potential to rally with Samira is pretty huge. All right, maybe we got enough stuff now. I mean, he, he's just dropping these big dudes. Mm, we're losing Samira at this point. I mean, we we can uh, make him. How do we want to go about this? It's like we can make him use steam to to put the hook into Samira if we double Jimmer, but then we lose out. On uh, then we lose out on our ability to get these bonus stats onto Varus. Really need him to blast for about a million on this next turn, so we'll just we'll just give up on Samira at this point. At least she'll get another strike in, right? That's a fairly big deal, uh, putting another good card into our hand. Might be he might just send the steam into oh that's so greedy. <laughs> it's like any any combat trick just gets us out of that so easily. He's got a fearsome we can block it. Okay. Ooh, so greedy. Where do we want to put the Ballista? He's only got the, the two units that can block the Fearsomes at this point, and then we pretty much just have to OTK next turn. And so uh, I, I'm thinking, well, what if we hook both uh, Steam and the 3-3? Three, three? Then we can challenge with Varus and then still have our Fearsomes come in and deal combat damage. And so I think we got a, we got a shot with these friends. Not, not taking the time to get Keeper of the Box going, though. So let's spread this damage out just a little bit. One unit gets Challenger. Another unit gets Challenger. We can do one of these. Coming in for lethal. Is gonna bring a vengeance on us or <laughs> something, right? But oh, doesn't have it. Nice, nice. Ooh, get them OTKs in, man. Feels good. On an so much of that deck today. I don't know. I don't know if if Mega Mogwai made his glorious return and then just started playing uh, <laughs> started playing Evelyn Viego like it was a new deck or what's happened there, but. It's been it's been wild the number of times I've played it today. What? Get a little practice in, you know. What do we got here? Some Gwen Quinn, short thing. All right, so we don't have any equipments in this hand. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of everything. You could look to maybe keep Lunari Cultist because it's it's pretty decent against a lot of the early game plays coming out of uh, the opponent's deck, but it, it doesn't strike me as as ultimately being necessary. Here we go. We've got double equipment in hand already, but I think the Darken Ballista is still going to be good. It gets us in this spot to where you know Samira is able to kill Gwen. Four attacks, kind of nice. Maybe we should have picked up a combat trick because our hand is is so heavy in terms of, um, in, in terms of these uh, units, right? We don't have any interactivity at this point, but I think we'll be okay. So I'll pick up the combat reel. Uh, I'm not looking to block a phantom butler here. I'm just going to take the three, and then next turn look to to Samira hook in the butler. Interesting. No need to make a name for myself. Just an impression. All right, 
right, so do we want to send everybody? Uh, it's like we have the opportunity to pick up that point of spell mana. I, I don't think it's going to be that good. So we'll, we'll just make the good Samira hook into the butler. Move on from there. We can pretty safely just like throw a bad unit in front of Gwen at this point and, and not worry about her too much. Green Fang Warden's pretty annoying though. I will end their cyclical war. Not a ton we can do about him. It's like we're we're kinda stuck just taking the damage. And then I think we can go for the kill two turns from now. I guess three turns from now. All right, this should probably be his only play for the turn. We can still add some stuff to the board here. We're going to have to decide how much we want to do. Let's just skip on this first block. There's some argument here. Maybe maybe we should have just gone ahead and killed off the Green Fang Warden. I, I'm looking at this as we can get a Bakai down. It's going to be you know, somewhat useful. All out's actually kind of tempting. Um, but I, I think we just rather have Varus come out of it. But right, we could give up the Cultist and the Bakai to throw in front of the Green Fang Warden. And, uh, be a little bit safer. Stand with me. All right, we'll just take it. They bring the damages upon me. Ooh, is he gonna play a combat trick here? Limps beyond. Okay. See, this is the way I, I'm kind of thinking of this, is we'll, we'll get this good open, we'll get to, to deal a ton of damage for the round. Looks like we're going to be short of lethal, right? It's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. An additional flare would get us to 17. I mean, that seems fine. Let me, let me recount this real quick. 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7 from the Bakai. 10 with the cultist, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 with the all out. And then uh, it's a, assuming we get a strike in with Samira and then uh, Samira is going to uh, give us that last point of damage. I don't think that's too greedy. But with that in mind, let's let's do this. How many? This is like two, three, four, five, six. We can put challenger on our worst unit. Right. That's what it's about, isn't it? <laughs> Just slam it all in there. It's actually a lethal right now with the Samira uh, coming in like this. We, we do have to worry about Hate Spike, right? Hate Spike is something that could come in and uh, kill off one of these units. That's why I tried to spread the damage out to units that weren't Samira. It was in case he does have a, a Hate Spike to get into combat here. But this deck typically doesn't play stuff like single combat, and so... They, they should be limited to just the one card. And then again, that's one of those spots to where uh, he shouldn't have the mana to, um, to to do anything else crazy that turn, right? He, he won't have any units to play Cataclysm. He can't rally or anything. And so uh, give us a, a good opportunity to just go all in. Great. Next battle. Whew. The old OTK days. Man, it, it was tough for me. Like, I, I, I made the the switch from playing Expedition into, into the competitive uh, constructed when uh, Pantheon, uh, Yumi Pantheon, was kind of at its peak. And it's such just like a, a, a weird style of deck to be picking up. You know, if you come from a different card game, it, it's very, I don't want to say easy. It's just uh, more familiar to kind of understand uh, the the various like combat maths and interactions between say like elites into another deck but trying to piece together these otks and determining what you know units was important to kill and how much you could push uh taking damage from your opponents and stuff and, and setting up your otks it was it, it was pretty tough to do and then i i feel like last season we spent a lot of time trying to really pick up some decks like pantheon and pick up decks like varus and i, I feel like it's done a a lot of help in terms of uh, me getting ready for this now 
Uh, I, I call it muscle memory as uh, the, the kind of concept to where I, I always explain it with the deck like uh, Thresh Nasus as to where, uh, you know, you played uh, a bunch of Thresh Nasus back in 2021. Uh, you know, it stopped being a good deck for whatever reason. And now as new cards are released, there's a reason to come back to it. There's no reason to come back to it now, but, <laughs> you know, that, that was kind of the idea. And so as the new deck came around and it was good for, you know, two weeks, you, you were kind of fresh and ready for it and you knew what to expect. And I had to kind of come in and, and, and pick up a lot of those skills that we didn't get in Expedition. And so it's been kind of a, an interesting switch uh, getting that stuff uh, back together. So with this, hang on, I got another another cat. No, it's this one. She, she's gonna want to sit on my feet. <laughs> but as we're as we're back into this, I mean, I guess we can pretty safely play Samira here. But uh, let's lead off with a different unit. I'm gonna come in with the Hookmaster here. Uh, if we if we learned our lesson from the previous game, we should probably just be picking up this upcycled rake. Although it's a little different against Gwen Quinn, uh, but I think this is fine. And then next turn, we can start trying to hook these units in. I'm not quite in the space to where I want to give up a ton to the Hallowed deck, but uh, I feel relatively safe given that we have the Violent Discord in hand. We can prevent a bunch of damage next turn, and so taking down some of these, uh, taking down some of these plays doesn't feel as bad. This is this was a, a misplay though. We should have just played the Lunari Cultist on the previous turn. I'm really regretting getting this shitty unit on the board now that we've uh, now that we've got higher quality cards in our hand. All right, though, let's counterspell the Quietus, get that nonsense out of the way. And then with a turn like this, given that we don't really even want the Ionian Hookmaster, like, he's he's not going to play any more units, right? He's just going to pass. I think we want to just give up our unit, right? We'll put the, the, the Flare onto the Hookmaster, use that to hook in uh, his one health unit. Just get this dumb dumb off of the board and let us get the scout equipment back in hand kind of cheap. And then we'll see if he comes at us with like a hate spike or something here. But I, I, I don't. I feel like we would prefer to be getting the damage in here as opposed to uh, a big nothing burger with this scout unit. I guess. Well, we miss an attack, right? It's got scout. I've been so. <laughs> I've been so depressed by the weakness of this Ionian Hookmaster that I didn't make the scout attack. We should have definitely done that first, right? Maybe he just comes in on blocks for whatever reason, but it's okay. We'll, we'll move. We'll move on from that. We missed. We missed our point of damage, I think. And a Quinn bird. Sure. And so the the one thing I, I didn't mention when we pulled up the deck and the the large number of violent discords we have here, this is tying in to uh, my my planned strategy for uh, for for the upcoming open event in the sense that I, I plan to leave Samira up. I like having these additional answers to Samira, these additional answers to uh, tiny elusives. We have a, a lot of ways to just kind of come in and uh, beat up on opposing small plays. And so that's what I'm looking to, to really gain out of these is uh, it's a nice interactive spell. We could be playing more Furious Wielders. We could be playing more Whirling Deaths. We could play things like uh, Nox and Telstones for the... Um, we could play cards like Nox and Telstones for the uh, utility, but I, I'm, I'm trying to come into this with the plan that we're, we're going to be picking up, uh, you know, small units and picking off some mirrors with these things. So now with this Gwen, we're just going to ignore her. We'll take the, the damage for this round. We can go ahead and add in the Cultist. It might be worthwhile to just go ahead and block, but... Uh, I like having a little bit of width here, so if something goes wrong with our Samira, she's not just uh, completely dead. And so I, I think that that's safe. Let's see what we can do now. Uh, we can bring in the upcycled rake. And we can drop a gem, get her up to four attack. We, we learned our lesson from the previous game, right? Give her challenger. Try and attack down the Gwen. There is stuff to worry about here. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking back on that previous turn in terms of what if, well, 
we had to violent discord the bird or we would have lost Samira, right? He was uh, attacking with Samira, giving her some bonus stats, and then... Uh, or, I'm sorry, he was attacking with the Quinn bird, giving it bonus stats, and he was going to hook Samira on the second strike. So it was like we had to get... Uh, Samira on or protected there, but we could have flipped her if we played the violent discord and with the, the the stat line she has now I'm a little disappointed that we didn't go for it, but I think it'll be okay Make a sad noise, you know <laughs> But the the thing to take note of with the second violent discord this is going to be enough to uh, to, to get our Varus and so if we want to try and bring him back, we'll have that opportunity now. We've got a, a second Quinn. Let's just pass. We're going we're, we're gonna to look to Whirling Death. If our, our Samira doesn't flip, it's not that big of a deal. We go. I did fail to recognize that she. we don't have a, a strike thing in hand. That's a, that's a little awkward. We can pick it up off the Whirling Death, but... We don't currently have a uh, a challenger thing, whatever it's called, the token. Flare. Nailed it. <laughs> it took a while to get there, but we got there in the end. Alright, let's start playing more stuff. See if that unlocks everything. We get the Samira flip, get the kill onto Gwen, we get the, uh, the the flare in hand, then we should be able to put a Darkened Ballista onto the Keeper of the Box, open with Samira next turn. Get some nastiness going on there. Uh, this should leave us in good shape. I feel like if he didn't have an answer to the stuff we were doing on the previous turn, he probably doesn't have it now. Like, he could have another Gwen and thread the needle, but I don't think we're going to run into a hate spike here. Should have maybe gemmed her early. The the the, the thing we didn't uh, try to play around there would have been the plus two plus two card, and that would have been quite the disaster if our our Samira failed. It's a tempting all out, right? Since we're we're going to be pushing for lethal this turn, we maybe should have given Samira the plus two and then looked to hook whatever his new play is with the keeper of the box, but. I think we're going to be short without a Varus. And so now we get to see if he plays a unit. We get the Violent Discord. And then we get the Varus on board. We have all these free flares in hand. And that should give us an opportunity to uh, end the game now. He didn't even rally this turn. This game should be done, Zos. If he didn't have the interactivity before. What's this, a Cataclysm? I was going to say, we were so close to surviving that if uh, we, we have the all out, but I think we should still be safe. This is only going to take us to one, so we shouldn't have to block, right? There's no ways that this deck's just going to deal a point of damage to us, so we'll let the combat happen. Try to keep up. Get more flares. Incoming Varus. He's ready to pick up a million stats. Should be calling it the day. Alright, one to the Nexus. One to the Nexus. One to the Nexus. <laughs> now what do we got here? Coming in for 17. He can prevent a point of it. We'll be calling it a day. Giving it a GG, you know. GG. Man, I just got something that, that I, I, I deserved, I guess. I, I sprinkled that water on the cat. Now there's a big wet spot on the floor. And so it's like I'm not sticking my foot on a cat anymore. I'm just sticking my... <laughs> Sticking my foot on a wet spot. That's what you get, man. That's what you get. It's, it's probably
probably piss. That's what. <laughs> He's like, I'll show you, buddy. I'll show you, buddy. This is how you do it. Oh, all right, though. Good stuff, man. I didn't I didn't talk too much about the Rune Terror open in the previous video, but it, it was a bummer in, uh, in the, the kind of secondary sense that uh, so much of the format came, came together just in the ways that we were kind of expecting it with the, that lineup of uh, Samira deck plus... Uh, I, I thought it was mainly going to be Samira Fizz and then uh, the set Karma. Uh, and then seeing the uh, the the mastering Rune Terra Pro team bring bring that exactly along with the Seraphine Jack deck, uh, uh, it felt like we should have just been in such a good spot and nothing really came together. But I, I, as I kind of like look through the stat aggregation sites these days, I, I feel like uh, the the decks like Karma Set are, are really in a weird spot to where uh, when it comes to like seeing the stats on an aggro deck, the aggro decks typically have a little bit higher. Uh, win percentages because they're a bit more forgiving uh, when you just like pick up the deck and start playing. And so if you say, "Oh man, there's an interesting deck I see on the internet. Let's get ten games in," uh, and you know it's a, it's a little bit more forgiving playing the aggro decks than something like Karma Set. Uh, and, and so I think the win rates are a little bit skewed. It just was much more skewed than I actually expected it to be in in practice. And I feel like i feel like karma sets probably a little bit of a better deck than we we're actually giving it credit for and our, our win rates against it shouldn't have been as good as we expected and so i'm still kind of happy with how how it all came together even though we didn't have a, a successful event but something interesting to think on also interesting to think on is that dude that was playing playing frey lord uh demacia someone after our hearts he was looking <laughs> he's looking pretty strong out there I, I i forget the exact parts of his deck list but it was it was fairly similar to uh the udir jarvan that we've been playing it was a cool one just some, somebody else that really appreciates the uh the usage of uh the 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 formidables and the darkened spear and uh some of those nice interactions against uh uh, burn spells and he was even playing stony suppressors which is something i i've thought of my thing with stony suppressor is in the past uh you always needed a way to boost it right it was basically just kind of like a landmark that didn't do anything and so you needed to have vanguard bannermans or inspired lights or whatever so that you could make your unit relevant and uh, it just doesn't feel like that you know currently exists in this format and so uh I'm not certain how much it, you know, particularly matters against. It, it seems much stronger against a deck like Seraphine Jack, or even Samira decks as opposed to um, Karma Set. Like I, I think Karma Set probably just ignores it, but uh, it was interesting to see that see that success rolling through. All right, though, what are we even playing against? Yumi Kale, dude's taking forever. He's boosted some cards in his hand. There's going to be some massive units coming at us here soon. <laughs> I'll, guarantee, I'll guarantee you that. But this is slightly awkward for us, given uh, you know we, we didn't pick up any uh, any equipment-based units, right? We got the the Varus in hand. We got the Hookmaster, but not a lot of uh, not a lot of good ones rolling through. Interesting attack. There's no combat tricks to punish with this. I'm curious why this is coming through. But we'll take it. Now we're in a good spot. We'll get the Varus in. We'll get the free spell off of the Cultist. We have four mana, so we can look to uh, play a Flare and then be protected with Whirling Death. Looks to be a pretty good spot for us. Which one's this? Called Shot? Makes parallel convergences. We don't, we don't play too much of these dumb Echo cards, right? <laughs> this one's this. Start a free attack with ephemeral copies of each ally. Okay, gotcha. Ooh. Ooh, that's a, that's a painful play there, my friend. Let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and do the, do the combat trick. Send in the Varus, get the hook. Uh, we'll follow up with the called shot so Varus gets the, the bonus stats post-combat, and then we might be in a spot to get a lethal on our next attack token depending on how these things go. We got we got stuff like Violent Discord to get, uh, you know, some double spells in. Might get some flips. 
we're a little bit short. Like, we probably can't get the Varus to flip because we don't have enough. Um, we don't have enough targets, but we might be able to just you know have a a really wide selection of units on this board. It, it might not be unreasonable to get a a, a Samira rally next turn. Nice hit and form up. Just gonna take the biggest, uh, the biggest hookmaster we can. Shepherd's authority looks good. All right, GG. Taking him down real good. Second Yumi of the day. Lots of, lots of interesting stuff down here in Platinum. Uh, I wonder uh, as soon as we roll into into Diamond if it's just going to be a, a, a different story. But here we got the Darkened Ballista. I'm going to hang on to our equipment. We're back up against Quinn Gwen again. And so we'll ideally pick up uh, a little bit of interactivity for the early game here. Oh, this looks good. Drop the Bakai. Don't really need any of these. The The protection's a little bit too slow, and we already have a momentous choice. We already have a Samira, so I'm going to skip over all of that. Uh, if he drops a Boisterous Host, we won't attack. Uh, there's no reason to let him start getting hallowed this early. Samira turns up anyways. Cool. No need to make a name for myself. Just an impression. He's gonna be ready to battle. <laughs> he's about to, he's about to pick up a dark and ballista, start hooking stuff. I wonder if we really go for it here, though. I wonder if we can get into the spot to where we put the ballista onto Samira, right? And then he just says, "Oh no, that's way too much. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to allow that." Oh, well, if he's gonna play foyer, there's no reason to not attack. Well, there's a, there's reasons to not attack, but I don't think we're we're looking to to start dropping flares just yet. True power eclipses both day and night. So we'll stop there. Pretty reasonable chance we flip the Samira next turn, right? We need basically just to spend four mana, and we'll get it. So if we don't play Ambitious Cultist, we do spew off a bunch of cards, we can get the flip. It's going to kind of depend on what they play. The never ends. More spillages. I, don't, I don't think it's that interesting. All right, Cultist it is. Can be analyzed, even dark. What do you got there? Grant an ally in play and in hand 1-1. One, one. Do you have to have uh, an ally in hand to cast this thing? I guess we'll find out when it comes back to our turn and we can see if it, if it turns blue bordered. Okay, we can cast it without a unit. Good deal. So not that big of a deal on this turn. How much of this do we want to get in front of? We should probably prevent the damage. That seems fine. Go ahead and clear out a boisterous host. Gotta leave Samira at home. So this is going a little bit worse than those other games. I feel a little okay in the sense that we have violent discord. So if he wants to say, play a Quinn bird and then follow up with a... Um, play a Quinn bird and then follow up with uh, like a cataclysm or something, we have the, the violent discord to take it down. So we should be relatively safe here. Brings in a foyer. Okay. We can take down the boisterous host. Get our fearsome unit in. It should be unblocked at this point. And then if he wants to cataclysm the ghastly band into Samira or something, we're, we're still protected with the discord. No scout birds? Beautiful. 
So is it like a hallowed one million at this point, right? <laughs> We're gonna have to gonna have to worry about that. But ooh, Furious Wilder was a big draw. It's gonna let us take down a Gwen. Gwen's a, a fairly scary unit. Quinn, not nearly as much. Uh, she's just a little scary, not big scary. But uh, I think we want to, to try and get in front of this stuff. Let's see. We want a violent discord the bird. We want a furious wielder the Quinn. And we still have two mana behind, so we can play any of these tricks if we need to. Don't hold anything back. I won't. It's weird to see it spread out like this. I'm curious why it did that. All the spells go on the stack and then the, the Discord copies after. Is that what's happening when we when we see that? Gotcha. Okay, well, I would assume we're in pretty good shape at this point, right? I would think if he had Cataclysm, he would have played it last turn. Ooh, he's coin flipping a Mist Call. He hits Valor. Okay. Well, nothing we can do about that. We're still in pretty decent shape in terms of, of getting a kill next turn, right? I mean, he's gonna he's gonna kill Samira with the Valor, um, which kind of sucks, but we can we can threaten a lot of damage off of Varus. Oh shit! I forgot we just had another <laughs> just out, outright had another Samira in our hand. I just assumed it was the combat trick. You learn learn something new every day. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Stand with me. Let's let's leave Samira back. I, I think I'm okay with putting the the keeper of the box out as a block, but uh, so Samira is close to getting killed by a hate spike, and uh, I, I don't want to get her down that low. All right, we're gonna we're gonna drop in. Uh, Varus and start popping off here. We don't need to see um, Don't need to see our units dying in that way Probably should have just open attacked here, right? If we're gonna if we're gonna flip the Samira All right, no thank you with that. Let's give, oh, we wanna give, we did a misclick there. We wanna give Varus Challenger so that he's got the, uh, the thing. Now, did we already waste the rally? That that was the thing I was ultimately worried about here was we were going to, we were gonna play too many cards and then Samira was gonna rally when we still had uh, uh, the attack token. Didn't matter. We had enough at the end of the day. G G. Now, it makes me curious about these Quinn Gwen matchups. As this is like the third time we've played it, we beat it every time. Uh, if it's actually a decent matchup, like with the the lineup that we took into the 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 Mastering Runeterra Open, uh, Quinn Gwen was kind of a problem point, right? We were looking to ban out. Uh, uh, we were looking to ban out Ash. Uh, Ash LeBlanc, whatever that thing is called. And then after that, uh, we we're looking to ban out uh, kind of Quinn Gwen as a secondary deck if it turned up. But uh, the, the the matchups never really felt spectacular. And it was a Quinn Gwen is a really strong deck against stuff like Aatrox Vane. And it, this strikes me as a, a matchup that we shouldn't be winning so much against. So I'm curious as we climb up in the ranks a little bit, how much more challenging that match is going to be. But reasonable enough start. We had the Hookmaster that gives us an equipment. We had a Samira uh, for the early game fun time activities. Let's see what we can do now. How much is that? Uh, let's go slower with the Samira here. Like, I I worry about the uh, the Sea Scarab costs two or three. It costs two, right? It's a real bummer for us if we play Samira, then he has Sea Scarab. I I think. I don't know. Like, I'm curious if, like, if we're playing, and it's like the classic action attack, right? When we we get that action bluff attack into the opposing two three, like, I I feel like if we're at an event, 
like uh, like the rune tear open, we could probably get away with it. But I, I'm not certain how I feel about that uh, uh, in platinum. All right, but looking at these, I, I could see picking up a whirling death. We're, we're getting to the point to where we don't really need units anymore. And it would be nice to have a combat trick. So we can pick that up for next turn. I don't think we're uh, immediately going to be using it, right? The, so as far as our next turn goes, we're going to play Samira. We're going to uh, give her the bonus. Then we're going to hook the Dead Bloom Wanderer with the Samira. Just trying to think if we'll have enough mana the rest of the way. Let's play Hookmaster. It's hoping to hit Fishwhack. Or not Fishwhack. I saw Fishwhack and said it. I was hoping to hit... Uh, uh, combat reel. Interesting. This is one of the, the, the most important units that we can be removing. It, it, it's what allows the opponent to come in and activate deep. So that's a, a very, very, very aggressive attack out of a sea scarab. So let's see how this goes. It's kind of, you know, is what it is. Samira's, you know, at, very much at risk here. We're probably going to find ourselves just having to play Expanse's Protection. <sighs> but we can we can open and see what happens. <laughs> Comes. Put that, put that spell onto Samira. Be nice if we had that plus two plus two combat trick here right just blast him with a flare and give her plus two plus two wonder if that's what opponents worried about here seems like it was all right so the ordering here doesn't really matter uh, he's he's gonna gain max health back regardless of how we block these and so kind of is what it is he leaves us with the fearsome, sends the, the the shepherd's rod back to hand, the shepherd's authority. Okay. The blessed isles live through me. What is power in its most distinct Yeah, swindle. Are we playing? Are we playing Samira Fizz out here, picking up the swindles? Oh shit, shit, shit! I, I, I wasn't sure how this worked, and we've we've messed it up. Uh, we we should have done a better job protecting our Samira. I, I, I couldn't remember if you played a follow up unit off of Maokai if you could get a sapling, and it it turns out you can. <laughs> and so, uh, we we should have saved the Whirling Death or put the Shepherd's Authority onto Samira. That was potentially a game breaker there. We're probably too slow at this point to to shut them down. Like, w without the access to the rally, I'm kind of worried as to how this is going to go. Especially if we run into, say, a Vengeance here. So so my idea with the, the game at this point, he still can't block the Hookmaster, that's fine. We can uh, safely hook in Maokai if we want. Is that how we still feel with the Sea Scarab on board? He's going to hit deep almost automatically anyways. It's it's fairly impossible to not have a deep card at this point. So let's put Challenger on our guy. At least prevent him from generating more of these... Uh, generating more of these Maokai saplings. And then I think we'll want to save our Furious Wielder for if he plays... Uh, the six six, right? The 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 sea monster, the sea deep, whatever whatever the guy is that uh, that kills your units. I want to be able to strike him down. The sea beast, I'm sure that's what he's called. <laughs> it's something like that, you know. All right, dude's deep. Let's check out that hand. So he's got a champion in here, right? We're only seeing two cards: vengeance and jettison. So we should be. 
pretty certain that's either a Nautilus or a Maokai. Pick up the fish whack at this point. We gotta have a way to to try and deal damage. Hmm. Nice draw and salvage. That's <laughs> that's the one I want. You can have the vengeance back. Give me the salvage. Nasty. So the champion was Maokai. He's pretty close to flipping. Only one card left at this point. Or one mana left. We can pretty safely take him down. Still not looking great for this next turn, though. give up on that one. I, I don't know if we would have been able to take that one down uh, had we not just thrown away our Samira. It would have definitely been different. She would have... Uh, the, 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 the space we need to be in with that is, as you see some of these games to where we're just blowing out the opponent, but we're getting like the Samira and the Varus and the Rally on board, you can do kind of a similar thing with, with the, the Shepherd's Authority on a unit and Samira as to where uh, you're representing a, a ton of damage. And we really needed that flipped Samira to be getting um, getting a rally in there, so we could potentially like clear some stuff out, rally, and then reattack. And, and just losing her in that way was uh, was brutal. It's not a particularly good matchup at any rate, but uh, we 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 definitely gave up our chances um, when we didn't protect the Samira there. But I'll definitely remember how Malkai works now. <laughs> got 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 that one on lockdown. So again here, we'll hang on to the Hookmaster that's going to uh, give us an equipment. After that, we're going to start mulliganing for Samira. Didn't find her, but got her on the predict. And we're up against what looks to be Darkness with Freylord. I'm not certain what Freylord would be in here for, but we're going we're gonna to find out soon. Hookmaster in. I'd like Combat Reel. It doesn't turn up. I, I think uh, next... Uh, probably the fix in 5,000. The, well, it, it's tough. Like, the Pan of Pain does stop a, stop a lot of their damages, and so we can look to, say, put the Pan of Pain over onto Samira, but it feels like the Quick Attack thing should be doing a lot of the similar protections. Now here, this might be greedy again. I, I, I'm so excited to get Samira on the board <laughs> that uh, g giving up a little bit to do so, but Maybe we should have just put the Ballista onto the Bakai. This is going to turn out okay for us. But, well, hopefully it turns out okay. <laughs> see, let's see if he's got the uh, Elixir of Iron. Surprised he played the Mystic before combat, but... Uh, getting a nice build up here. We gotta, we gotta watch ourselves from this point forward, though. We gotta keep the mana back for this expanses protection momentous choice. We're being way too greedy with what we're doing here. One ghost down, thousands to go. Hmm. Not a ton that we can do about Senna. Let's just pass, see if we can't get through the turn. He doesn't have the mana to play the Darkness, which is uh, which is fine. Uh, doesn't attack, though. Also fine. Now we should be able to get, get something special happening with the turn. So let's go ahead and put the Ballista onto Samira. Uh, I hope we don't get too, much, too punished for that. Uh, on the previous turn, we could have put... Um, we we could have put a... Uh, like, spent one mana, right? I'm fine with taking three mana into this turn, but we should have probably spent one more. Getting dark. I don't think anything can kill our Samira at this point, right? With, with only four mana. So I think we should be able to add in Varus, and then we can go ahead and make the Flare play. Start popping off for a big chunk of damage. I think so, right? 
I mean, you can play undergrowth for three. Otherwise, it's like the the Shadow Isles removals, which aren't happy about three health units. Sure. Darkness and light. Should just be able to attack around him next turn. Oh, he doesn't throw down to the darkness? I don't know about that. See if we can't find something to win the game. Momentous choice should be pretty big next round, right? Let us start putting the damages on our, our small units. So like, uh, I'm looking at this and saying, like, okay, let's hook... Uh, let's hook Senna out of combat with this little 2-1. And then if we need to start adding in damage, we can put uh, stats up on the Hookmaster. Avalanche. Same kind of deal. We'll just move the damage. We'll move the hook over to the Lunari Cultist. Is that bad? Ooh. I didn't, I didn't anticipate Senna flipping. She can do some nasty stuff next turn now that she can she can do stuff at burst speed. I don't know, I don't know if I like that, man. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I like what we got ourselves into here. Right, this is fine. We can survive this. It's next turn that's the problem now. Since the, the you know the rest of his spells are going to be at fast speed, that was probably a, a mistake. But let's at least make him deal with three separate units, right? Where are we at? There's the momentous choice. Sounds great. I, I don't really care who sent a block, so we can probably just send a flare to the face. This is another one of these weird spots, though, where we need to get into combat. Uh, right, so we're going to play these two. That's going to get Samira up to five. Now we can attack. And once our attack token is spent, we'll, we'll feel a little bit better about playing these other cards since we know we're going to get a rally. I, I don't... Like, the, the rally... The, the thing that strikes me as being important in terms of having rallies is going to be um, no. the Senna... the flip thing, right? Whatever this is called. Shadow Darkness. The dawning Shadow that gives everything Neg 2 attack. could probably just let this combat go and kill him with flare but I, I i think this is fine let's go ahead and cast some more spells maybe kill off the the senna make him do some more stuff that's all all well and good harsh wins number two gonna gonna punish us for <laughs> not leaving him at one I, I guess there's not any burst heal in the format anymore right uh, you, you used to be able to like to to where the problem there would be was uh say we left him at one and then he gets the, the he gets priority, and then he plays the Averosian Healer, whatever the the three three for three is. And so, uh, you know, you could play around something like Vile Feast, you could play around something like Grasp of the Undying. But if he puts the unit on board and burst heals, uh, then our Flare wouldn't get the kill. But I, I don't think there's anything in the format now that can heal at that rate. Right, Catalyst of the Aeons uh, got rotated, and then the only heal unit is. Uh, the Ionia one now, right? The Ionia barkeep, the the three four 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 that heals for three, so it should have been safe there. I, I would have had to have kind of like gone back to recalculate and see if we would die to a uh, to to a second harsh winds, and so we probably should have just let that one attack go through and let him fall to one, and then come back in with the with the flare. But anyways, not a bad set of games. We got a, a nice collection of decks to go up against, and you know th this feels like it's it's certainly a real deck in terms of uh, what it can provide and what it can do. It, it's something that uh, again I'm looking to be strong against the Samira decks of the format, and then ban out uh, Karma Set, and so it, it feels like it should have been okay there. 
the the places where this deck is going to struggle is against something like Ash. You know, you don't want to be playing your OTK decks against Ash, uh, but it, you know it has a a lot of power. We had a lot of good things going for us here, and I I think it's probably you know a very real deck. The the things I will say that you occasionally see out of this deck is some versions will play Riven, and so you'll see uh, like three Samira, two Varus, one Riven. Uh, since you can typically just draw Varus off of the uh, off of the cultist spells, and so that's certainly a, a thing to come out and consider. I don't have enough experience with the deck to know the answer there. I know I haven't been uh, upset with the Varuses that we have because it's so important getting that equip in the early game that uh, having the extra Varus might make up for uh, you know the the extra champion that you would get out of Riven. And then again, some of these spells can kind of uh, be be switched around in terms of do I want to play three cultists or three ambitious cultists? Do I want to play whirling deaths, violent discords, uh, furious wielders? We were taking this with the understanding that uh, we we're planning on battling with Samira, and so we want to have this extra violent discords in here uh, to to help deal with that. But good stuff, good set of games. I had fun with that. Hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you have learned a thing or two along the way. You had a good time watching. This is Bust and we thank you for being here.